Is America headed for civil war? That's a, that's a rough one. Um, you know, remember the first time you said, Hey, come on this podcast thing that I'm going to do. And I said, I only want to talk about a very limited amount of stuff that I feel very qualified to talk about, like the fundamentals of shooting the basics. Yeah. Now you got me on here talking about the boogaloo. <laughs> uh, Put you on the man, spot, man. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, why not? Um, boy, hard, 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 hard to say. I certainly hope not. Yeah, I mean, it sure. would be awful. Um, we've done it essentially twice before. So to say that, you know, it could never happen. We've done it twice. I mean, we had the official civil war and technically the war of independence was more or less a civil war, right. you know, yeah. uh, kind of, sort of. Yeah. So, you know, it's happened in a lot of other places. Uh, so to say it could never happen here, you know, uh, yeah. you know, I'd say it seems a bit, 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 bit high, high, high on our horses there to say, well, it could never happen to us, right. you know, um, as we push ever forward into a, you know, harder and harder and harder political split or divide, whatever, yeah. you know, where there's really no really talking anymore or hashing things out between the two sides. And I think that's kind of sort of what got us going down the previous two go rounds where you hit a political divide that, that can no longer be, you know, worked out, right. you know, uh, civilly. Well, then you go to the you know, the, the, the logical conclusion is, well, if we can't talk it out then or work it out, then we're going to have to fight it out. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if like in the past, cause you know, there, there, there's been this division, like say during the Vietnam war, for example, there were a lot of political divisions, sure. but it feels like I wasn't alive then, but it definitely feels like in the rhetoric around it right now, there's, there's definitely this trend of if this continues, it's going to lead down this path. Well, and we've already seen the beginnings of, of violence, right? I mean, Rioting is a form of political violence. Mm -hmm. uh, multiple <laughs> assassination attempts <laughs> definitely fit in that category. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've seen at least two of those now. Um, so, uh, so, so to say it's brewing, I think, is definitely, definitely a thing. Yeah. Um, you know, I kind of think of if something like that were to happen, I kind of think of it maybe three three different ways, like three different kind of stages. And I like to kind of think of things like what has happened before, you know, or, or, or even if not to us as our country, but happened elsewhere. Right. So the official, you know, civil war involves, it would involve, you know, the military picking a side and becoming involved. Right. That's what happened last time. You know, um, do I think that that's likely? I certainly hope not. Uh, <laughs> that would be very bad. Um, <laughs> you know, um, very bad, but that's like kind of worst case scenario. Right. So then, okay, well, what are some other things that could happen? And then I kind of think of it like maybe there's think of like a divorce, right? We, we hit a divide, you know, we, we hit a political impasse that is not no longer going to be worked out. Half the people want to go one way. Half the people want to go another. Okay. So before it gets to the violent stage or, or to prevent that, you know, um, we say, okay, well, I mean, like a, like a two country kind of a thing, you know, let's say there's the red States go one way, the blue States go another way, you know, um, you know, is that possible? Well, I mean, there's a lot of other split countries, you know, there used to be East Germany and West Germany, you know, there's a Northern I I Ireland and Northern Ireland, mm -hmm. you know, uh, there's, you know, the United States is enormous compared to other countries. We could fit 50 countries, <laughs> you know, inside of our borders. Now, is that likely to happen? Don't know. Um, but that's certainly probably a better solution than fighting it out. Yeah. You know? Um, but yeah, I want to talk about the, the likely scenarios that would lead to it. So those are, those are definitely some, some ones that would, that would leave that, that would lead to it. I think the big one, as we both agree, is probably political division, right? That's, I mean, obviously that's the big one. So, um, so what do you think the reasons why we're so divided politically today? Oh man, that's a, uh, just, just could, uh, people have very different ideas about what they want or what they think they want. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and you know, one side has been pushing very heavily for a significant change that is just a very, very hard turn from what we kind of traditionally have always been, you know, uh, what do you, what do you mean think, by that? Well, 
yeah, I mean, you know, one side wants to go all, all, all but all but commie, <laughs> you know, uh, and the other side says, no, leave us alone. We want to go back to doing this whole free market thing, you know, and that's that's that. that that's kind of a, a again, one of those political impasses. You can't argue with commies and, and you can't reason with them. So that's, again, one of those. And they can't leave people alone. It's it's part of how they, you know, part of their enti- how their entire system runs. Right. Do, do you think that the definition, because I think a lot of the the line is blurred in communication. And I think. Uh, On what, purpose. <laughs> right. And I think that, you know, you know, there are self-proclaimed left, far leftists who are self-proclaimed communists as there are self-proclaimed, you know, far right activists who are, you know, the racists and the people who want to see an end to uh, to equal equal rights. Now, I think those are are very much the fringe on both sides, right? And so, here's the summary of what I think the right says about the left and left says about the right. Because to me, it's like two sides of the same ignorant coin. So the right says about the left um, is the left has become the establishment, censoring free speech pro-corporate greed, warmongering, obsessed with identity politics, promoting cancel culture, leaving open borders, promoting socialism, anti-American values, and demonizing law enforcement and patriotism. And then a summary of what the left says about the right is the right is pushing authoritarianism, suppressing voting rights, embracing racism, denying science, stoking fear, defending corporate power, and spreading dangerous misinformation. So you have such two... These... These things that I just described are, are two fringes of both sides. Sure. And I'd like to believe that most of us sane people lie somewhere within, within this. And so what I what I personally think has been the biggest culprit, the number one thing is social media. I think personally, it's created this rift and divide. Mm-hmm. Um, I think one of them, one of the reasons is the algorithms they had, they create, sure. they create echo chambers, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, like on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, they're designed to maximize their engagement. So, you know, they show us content that aligns with whatever our, our whatever, whatever your our opinion views. is, you follow this page. Sure. That's, that's more politically on the right. You're going to get more stuff. And eventually it, it keeps pushing to see what it can get you to want to watch. That's more aligned with your, with mm-hmm. your viewpoints. And then you get in this mindset of saying, Oh, well, everybody thinks like I do. Cause this is all I see on my feed. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so as an example, a 2016 study by researchers at MIT and Yale found that social media users were more likely to share information that aligned with their political views, even when that information was false, which can reinforce existing biases and prevent meaningful conversations. Sure. So I think that's a big one for social media. Um, what else? another one with social media was, is the spread of misinformation, right? Mm-hmm. Whether, um, so, um, you know, false misleading information spreads quickly on platforms. And during this 2016 presidential elections, Russian operatives use social media platforms to spread political ads. So regardless of who they were trying to push, they were trying to push false stories and conspiracy theories to get people's opinion to sway one way or another. Mm-hmm. So whether it's unintentional through, um, you know, these echo chambers that we have or, or intentional through third parties or, or uh, other countries, it's, it's happening. Sure. Uh, a study in 2018 from the university of Oxford showed that misinformation is 70% more likely to be shared on Twitter than accurate news, which is pretty interesting. Um, and that can lead down a whole other, other, other slew of things. Um, Another one for me is the is the barrier that social media creates, right? You ever been on? I mean, people shit talk on on social media all the time. Have you if you've been in the comment sections? Uh, yeah, I, I stay. Oh yeah, you I, are. I'm You're like, a smart man. You're I a smart do man. incredibly very very little social media you know, stuff. Uh, very little. Is that um, is that the reason like why I, I've never had a Facebook account? I'm I've never. I don't. Yeah, you, you have an Instagram without a profile picture. And I think I don't think you've posted one. I don't I just, post anything. I <laughs> just follow a couple of people and it's like a couple of guys from the shooting world and, and a couple of uh, like workout people. Well, why is that? <laughs> you know, I don't know. Uh, it just, it's so just, many people I, have, have, can, have I, been I, sucked I, in by the algorithm. How, yeah, have you, how have you escaped it? It's not interesting to me. Uh, you know, it's, it's a, I guess I'd rather go do stuff. And, and I, I just, I don't I've never felt that I'm important enough to, Hey, look at world. Let me film myself doing stuff and then look at me. 
who the hell are you? We're like, doing I mean, it right uh, now, baby. <laughs> Fair. I, but, uh, I, I, I yanked, I yanked yeah, you yeah, in you here. Yeah, you've drugged me in here kicking and screaming. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, yeah, I just I just never felt that that was, I mean, who, who the hell is going to, you know, what, I mean, why? It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything for me, I guess. Right. Um, and, uh, and also none of the opinions that I would have are going to be popular or, um, you know, or, or, uh, shareable, <laughs> you know, on social media. Fair, so, fair. so I stay out of it. Um, but I think you're right though. It is, it, it is, it's a disaster it, it's, and it does push, push people into more and more and more extreme positions. Well, also the, just the kind of stuff that people would say in the comment section and online when there's a screen dividing you. And it, 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 it's not even about like, oh, this guy could beat me up if I say this, it, it, which, you know, it's more about there being a lack of humanity. It's like, it, it's, it's a thing. It's like drone strikes, right? Versus like back in the day when a Spartan we have to go stab each other we up had close. To, yeah, you had to look at the whites of his eyes and stab somebody and take their yes. life. Much bad different. Breath distance. Yes. <laughs> much, yeah. much different. And I think, although that's not this that much of an extreme, it's still the same idea. It's like we have been disconnected because we are not in the presence of another human and we're not communicating, interacting with them on that level. And that allows, for example, a Pew Research Center survey that 41% of, of Americans have experienced some form of online harassment and harassment most frequently related to political differences. So, um, you know, that screen is also another reason why social media is, be, is why I think it's distanced us from one another because it's take, it's dehumanized us. Sure. Um, and then, um, there was another study. I'm going to just keep quoting them, man. Uh, 2017 found a uh, Pew Research study found that 45% of social media users say they have stopped following or unfriended someone on social media due to political disagreements. And I, this has happened to me personally. It's happened to me. Uh, although I didn't unfriend anybody because I don't do the social media thing. But in real life, I've had people that I've known for a long time who have just taken a turn and I went, oh, uh, I can't, I can't. I can't hang out with you, man. Uh, I just, I just can't. If, yeah. you're, if you're gonna, if that's what you really think, and and you're committed to that idea, that, that that's just not good for me. You know, that that would be enough for you not to not to not to hang out with somebody. That's your. If it's, it depends what the issue is, but yeah, I have had that has happened once or twice to me. Um, that I'm just like, you know, that no, I can't 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 do it. I, I I hope that I don't. Um, I don't instigate a severing of a, a relationship with someone right. because of political views. And I've had people come up to me and defriended me. I've had that happen before. And I've come up to them and messaged them privately asking them that this, is this something that they would actually do defriend me? And it's, it's, I, I was able to, to kind of change and reframe it for them to realize like mm -hmm. how silly what they were doing was. Yeah. Um, I, and I hope that I, I never have to feel like I need to distance myself from somebody based on on so, something that I believe in. There might be some ideal law. I, uh, I, I don't think there's anything politically that's enough to be ideologue about that's going to want me to not speak to somebody again that I'm friends with. But we'll see. This, we'll, we'll see it what happens, happens once, this, once the Civil War breaks uh, out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Like during, so during COVID, so social media became like you know, a battleground for this. Mm -hmm. uh, people increasingly curated their feeds to reflect their own beliefs and unfollowed or blocked those who disagreed. That was a big one, mm -hmm. right? And so I think that's kind of like what started a lot of, a lot of this separation and, and, how, um, and how COVID and the vaccine was was a, a huge catalyst for this mm -hmm. division between. Oh, well, you got to really right. see. Uh, you got to really see inside. Um, well, what a lot of people really thought and what they did. Mm -hmm. You know, it was such a such a unique and ridiculous scenario, but uh, happened. You know, right. and uh, and you really got to see see what people were about real right. quick. When people get scared, mm -hmm. when they think, even if it's not, I mean, shit hit the fan. But when, but but not to the extent that 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 it could have they sent everybody <laughs> right. home like it, it was such a crazy such a well, crazy everyone was acting like this was some sort of mass like disaster i'm like they told everybody to go home for a while well granted a lot well, like, well <laughs> it wasn't uh, that big a deal i think the the bigger ones would be arguing the mandates that ruin people's financial lives oh, right absolutely. those are those crushed, are the big ones and that, those are things when yeah. your livelihood is at stake and you're like how am i supposed to feed my damn kids that is when that's when it, it, gets when it gets real. Yeah, that's when it Absolutely. gets real. So, um, also social again, going back to social media and how it's, how I think it's like the number one culprit is also how it's 
one, shorten attention span of people, but also simplified debate, right? Like if you go on YouTube or if you go on, on TikTok, you're, you're fine debates, but it's basically like the, the title is like liberal owns conservative or conservative owns liberal in debate. And, and, and you pick it based on your side and then yeah. you get to see somebody get crushed and we get to feel good about yeah. ourselves. And, and I'll say one thing about, I don't know if you watched the vice presidential debate. Uh, I saw a little bit of it. I watched, I was for the presidential debate when Kamala and, and Trump debated, mm -hmm. I, I could, I watched like maybe like seven or eight minutes. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't stand it. I was able to watch over an hour of the debate and I, it was sub substantive. It was like a really good debate regardless of what, who says, mm -hmm. who said one or didn't. I was, there was a lot of mutual respect behind with the guys, with, with these two guys talking to each other mm -hmm. and they were able to bring up, have their own substantive, substantive facts and they weren't arguing over each other. And it was, I think it was really well moderated. So I hope to continue to see that. And I only wish that these two vice presidents were running for presidents. <laughs> but, but, but then again, where we are with social media is like, we want such polarizing figures. We're so attracted to this polarization that we want someone like as, you know, as crazy as Kamala and as crazy as cartoonish, cartoonish as, as Trump. Both of them. Yeah, yeah, they're both cartoons. And yes. to the point to where if I, I have they're, a couple- they're like, they're like walking memes. Yeah. Like, I mean, like <laughs> the, this is a real person. This is meant to be taken seriously. Right. And that's what we want, and it, which is, it's kind of like uh, on uh, Idiocracy, you know, when uh, the Absolutely. president's shooting an M16, has got the all, all American flag and say, yeah, baby. Um, but yeah, debates over complex issues like immigration, climate change, healthcare reform are often reduced to hashtags or memes, stripping away important context. Yes, uh, I would add to all of this um, as another major issue of uh, income inequality. Uh, it's got to be a big one, um, especially I think that's going to be a massive issue. You kind of hit on that a little bit when you can't feed your kids anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're a regular person, a normie, you're a normal person. <laughs> and then all of a sudden through whatever whether it's inflation, whether COVID crushed your business, whether, you know, any number of things could have happened, but, but just, just, a, just the income inequality across the board is going to cause problems. Yeah, that, I wanna... has, that has been done time and again throughout history. That is, you know, I mean, you get, get, get the peasants good and starving and, and, and riled up and, you know, all of a sudden heads start coming off. Yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> and I've got, I've got, I want to talk about the, the financial side of things. The last one I want to give for social media is the false equivalence and both sides ism. You know, social media can create false sense of equivalence between legitimate and fringe views, right? And so, um, and giving more visibility to extreme or unsupported positions, like we're saying, because of your echo chamber, it can keep pushing you in one direction, right? Well, and the fact that we're even talking about this now, if we had t talked about this, if I had brought this concept up to you like five years ago, you'd have looked at me like I was, like I was a crazy person, right. you know, yeah. like, civil war, shut up, dude. Like, the, like you know... <laughs> Whatever uh, you know, uh, you know now it's on the lips of almost everybody. Right, exactly. like like I heard it on the radio the other day, like oh, the really? regular radio. Like a DJ was like, "Ha ha," made a joke about it, and I was like, "Why is why is like a like a regular radio station DJ making a joke about yeah, why it? Why would like, you even like, joke what, about yeah, it? Why would you even say it yeah. if it's, it wasn't just right there? Yeah, you know, right there on the tip of everybody's." tongue, you know, and, or the movie that I think just came or came out. Oh so, yeah, Civil War. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there have been, I mean, since COVID, we've always had disaster movies, but like, you know, that's been a big, I, I think, genre ever since, uh, since the COVIDs, yeah. you know. So one example of this, uh, this both sides isms was, was that, for example, you've got the debate over climate change, right? Social media often presented both the overwhelming scientific consensus that human activity is driving climate change, and then a small minority of voices that deny it as equally valid. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that, uh, how we combat it is that's what that's another issue but i'm talking mm -hmm. about the the overwhelming scientific community that believes that science that we are affecting the climate right and mm -hmm. people who are who think that that we are not affecting it um it created this created the false equivalence where fringe or unsupported views were given the same weight as well established scientific facts um and it's it's, it's uh the other example was after the 2016 presidential election um where the um where Trump had, where Trump was accused of colluding, colluding with Russia about the election of the outcome. Mm -hmm. And then these claims were made based on a now debunked Steele dossier, right? Which was funded by Hillary Clinton campaign, who was later fined. So despite this, the claims kept circulating for years, causing political divisions and people still to this day think that that's the case. Sure. So. Well, if you don't like the guy, any reason will do to dislike the guy. Right. You know. Yeah. yeah. And, and goes both ways, you know. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. It's a mess. Um, um, 
and it doesn't seem like it's going to get any better uh, anytime soon, which again pushes further towards the, if this, you know, things can't be worked out civilly, then it ends up being, being, you know, there ends up being a problem later. You yeah. know, there's, there's a wall at some point that you hit and then, and then it turns. But I, I think we've already seen some of that now. Um, like I was saying, so like we were talking about like the civil, you know, what could civil war look like? You know, I kind of think of it like three ways. So, right. There's the official one where the military participates, splits into two groups mm-hmm. and, you know, has at it. I find that unlikely and, and probably worst case scenario. Then there's sort of that more sort of divorce kind of thing where, yeah. okay, these States are going to go one way. These States are going to go another. And I think we see some of that now, right? I mean, you know, certain States have legalized marijuana. Mm-hmm. Well, the federal government hasn't legalized marijuana, but right. certain States, you, you go get a little card filled out and you go, go, go get your gummies. Like, I mean, <laughs> you know, right. no big deal, you know, um, sanctuary, cities and sanctuary states, right? The federal government has very official rules on immigration and some states said, nah, we're just not going to do it. So that's kind of that, that kind of divorce kind of situation where some states are going to go their own way and then others are going to, you know, do, 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 go, go, go the other route. Mm -hmm. The third kind of scenario I see as being very possible. And I think we're kind of in maybe, maybe the early stages of it is a kind of a situation like Northern Ireland, like the troubles where you're going to have pockets of violence breaking out. And we, I think we've kind of seen a little bit of that. I mean, mm-hmm. multiple presidential assassination attempts, right. uh, riots that were essentially permitted by one side or another, you know, um, you know, and that's kind of the, that kind of beginnings of political violence um, kind of popping up. Yeah. And so, so, a long drawn out mess, you know, like the troubles where you have two different groups that are actively, you know, causing, ca- ca- you know, causing violence, you know, you know, uh, visiting violence upon each other, um, uh, for an extended period, you know, for decades, mm-hmm. you know, and something like that, where it's kind of drawn out, but there are semi official backings, um, you know, on both from both sides. And that's kind of what you got right. you know, in the troubles. Right. And I see that being, the, the extreme. Probably more likely than the other two scenarios. Um, well, uh, well, just because it, it's, I just see it as more most likely. I want to talk about the second scenario that you mentioned, the, the divorce, because I feel like that might be the actually the best solution to help preventing the, such a war. Yes. Um, so so um, in my, you, you mentioned the financial disparity between between the social, socioeconomic groups, but also, um, so I, I think that might be one, one of the top top ones i think from from a political division standpoint because i want to talk about the financial division as well which which ties in with politics of course but i think the from a political division i think the big two that where there is a hard line drawn in the sand are abortion gun rights i think those are the two issues where i think people have they're not changing their their minds on this and there's very little wiggle room because it is so hard to define to to define what's right or what's wrong and i'll give you a couple examples so abortion for example um you know i'm not saying all people on the right but a lot of conservatives um who may have backgrounds who have may have faith who might be christian and and may not even but uh believe that abortion is murder period right mm-hmm. as soon as uh, as soon as the bur- uh, life begins at conception you this is my this is my moral standpoint this is what is morally right you cannot impede on this this is like you are you are murdering some somebody sure. so that they have that's a very strong stance to have yeah and then the other stance being this is not murder. This, these are clumps of cells. This is my body to do what I want with it. You, the government, sure. no government can tell me what to do with my body. So, you know, there is definitely, there's that very fine, there's a very, it's, it's very clouded mm-hmm. in my opinion. And I'm, I find myself conflicted on the top, on, on the topic, on the subject as well. I'm, I'm, I, I am not hard one way or another, but I can, I understand both sides of it. So I, I, I would say, you know, I have my own because I want the government to be as little involved as possible. I would say, you know, I might lean more towards pro-choice, but at the same time, uh, part of me does see that this is like that there is a, a, a an ending of a life element to it. So I understand that other side logically of it. Sure. Um, so uh, and then I want I want to talk about gun rights, and then I want to circle back around to how it deals with your your divorce scenario. Mm. So. Um, 
gun rights versus gun control. So um, first, you and I have disagreed in a lot in the past, a long time ago. I, I mean, you, you've had, you've been pro, pro, 2A for for as long as I've known you, and I've known you for, for what, 15, 20 years, something like that, um, 15 years, something like that, and uh, and my stance is, has changed, and I used to be anti, very anti-gun, and then as I learned to shoot and I learned more about it, um, I mean, hell, I'm wearing an MMP t-shirt, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I've definitely changed my stance on that. That's and the goal, that, change one at a time, one at but, a time. So... First, what scenario do you think in the case of of two A would be the last straw? And uh, yeah, so that that's the first question. What would be the would last, be the straw, last be like, straw? This like where where it would lead to? So the, the you know politicians on the left love to talk about confiscation. They know good and well that's never going to happen. Um, you know they can say it because it makes their people really happy, and they you know like you said you know get more extreme. Right? We're going to go to your house and take your stuff. No, you're not. Um, that's that's ridiculous. H- have they asked any of the cops that have to go do it whether they want to do that? Right. <laughs> you know, no. Is that uh, why you think it'll never happen? I think that'll never happen. But they don't need for that to happen. All they need to do, and they're very clever about this, is uh, they'll pass a law that says, oh, don't worry, you, everything will be grandfathered in. You can have it, but there's no more transfer. Transfer is the operative word in, like the key word in, in they always talk about gun sales. Gun sales are, are an issue for you to work out with tax people. You know what I mean? Um, transfer is the word that is used, right? So I transfer this to you. So if they could ban, they grandfather in what you have, but they say no more transfer. That means no more sales. It also means you can't give it to anybody. So you can't give it to your children, you know, when they get old enough to have it. You can't like send your, you know, then they just have to wait you out, wait for you to die, you know, get old and die. And then, you know, your kids will never have that stuff and they'll have to round up grandpa's old stuff and, you know, boom, get rid of it in a generation or so. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, that's probably more likely to what they would try to try to try to go for well the, the kids would still or would still be able to procure no more transfer oh no more no more transfer so no more sale no more giving it to anybody you have it that would legally, definitely be, legally on paper yeah. that's why they always want to register things that would be why the, are they registering things they want to know what you got and then they then they, then they just have to say well no more transfer and then we just wait you out right and and that's the argument for both sides because i think i think the the big disparity and where because I've I've seen both sides and I've been on both sides mm-hmm. is that uh, on the left there's or people who might be anti gun or gun hesitant or want some sort of firearm legislation to help makes them feel good it makes them feel safe it, it, it does but it and, doesn't it doesn't make them and safer. I've I've come to terms with that I, I've I agree with that uh, but I do want to explain how why that that inclination might come mm-hmm. in someone's mind is that the idea is that if there's some sort of registry, we know who's buying guns and then we can keep track on them. That's the idea, right? And so if somebody with like, say a mental illness, if we can keep some sort of thing on on a log that says somebody with a mental illness or a propensity for violence should not own guns, then we put them on a the list. The only problem with that is what it does for every other law-abiding person that- Well, and, and it's, it's, it's fanciful thinking. I mean, cocaine's illegal too. But how, you know, you know. I mean, well, you got to ask. Well, the, but you've got to ask yourself how much more prevalent would cocaine be if were, it were legalized? Right, right. And well, then, and that's that's the, that's the question: is that it, it? Would there be a lot more? Uh, I mean, think, look at booze, right? Like, you know, we we we, 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 we have, tried we've, this before. We've tried with this prohibition. With prohibition it doesn't work. It doesn't. It, it doesn't work. Uh, but I would say that did it? I, I don't know. I don't have the stats. Nobody will. But did, would would prohibit? We're we're prohibiting booze and alcohol prevent more less alcoholism i i I can't answer that question i don't know but that's that's the same idea behind taking legislating safety you're trying to legislate safety and and it's 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 more big government overreach uh you know it sounds good to whoever you know people that like that kind of stuff and and makes them feel good and feel safe uh but it it has quite the opposite effect and so the the only difference between that is that the the right to bear arms has been fabricated into the very essence of our government of of our institution right of our constitution so well yeah and it, and it again it highly misunderstood a lot of times i think you know the second amendment is one of those things it it is recognized 
in the Constitution. The Constitution doesn't give you that right. It recognizes that you already have that right. right. As you know, you're a you know a, a sovereign sentient being, right? Therefore, you have the right to arm yourself and defend yourself, you know, against whatever comes, you know, be that bad guys, government, whatever, you know? Um, and yeah, so the second, the second amendment in the constitution just, just recognizes that. So people say, well, we could just rewrite the constitution, take that out, you know? Okay. Another straw, you know, uh, they're, they're, they're really big on rewriting the whole first amendment that hasn't gone their way. So they're trying to get that under control as well. Um, I think that all just points to telling you, you know, when they start trying to rewrite that thing, that, that, uh, right. You know, it's a especially when we're talking about the bill of rights, the initial, Bill of Rights. Well, that, they want one and two gone. Right. Um, uh, well, they're, well, they're, they're one and two for a reason. Uh, I understand adding amendments mm -hmm. and, and changing it as, as we go, but the, the original Bill of Rights was is the reason why we have the Constitution. It's the reason why it was signed. Is the reason why it was enacted. Is the reason why we are America today as a as a as a nation. Right. Mm -hmm. So, were it not for the Bill of Rights, the Anti Federalists would not have gone through with it, and it was a necessary. It was necessary for that to happen. Sure. So uh, we are where we are today because of that, and we need to recognize the fact that that's what we need to have. That that what needs to be there. I don't want to go too deep into it, but I just wanted to talk about the straw that could break that 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 mm. that, that back and, and lead to something deeper. So um, now I want to tie it back to the role of states. Mm. Your second scenario, the divorce that you're talking about, Roe v. Wade is a perfect example of this situation mm -hmm. where. A lot of people on the left are angry that this has happened, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't. I see that this is being the best compromise given the situation that we're in. Kick it down to the states, let people vote on it. Well, and more importantly, as being somebody who understands what the intent of signing the Constitution was and forming a nation was, was to give as little authority to the federal government as possible keep more local control and keep more local local control mm -hmm. and, and this to me is the perfect just like you said if you want to go if you want to own a handgun and conceal carry come to texas if you don't go to go to california if you want to if you feel like if if an, if an abortion is an issue or you might have an abortion drive across the state line to whatever state you'd want to drive people to to drive to go get weed <laughs> I mean, you and, know. and and that's not to say. Listen, um, and and same or, thing or a gamble, right. you know. I mean, you know, the casino is legal over there, right? Okay. And I that's mean, not, how many how many people from from Dallas drive every weekend to Oklahoma to go to the casinos, right? Exactly. Or, or yeah. Louisiana, whatever. Right. And, you know? and and that's not to say that that issue uh, won't lead to its own set of problems. Like for example, if you take about talk about gun violence in like. Uh, Illinois and Chicago and cities where gun uh, where guns are heavily regulated and there's still a high prevalence of crime. We can discuss the reasons for that and the fact that anybody can drive across to a state line and get the hangout. But at the at the end of the day, I'm just talking about le letting letting the states letting people decide letting people decide letting the people of the state decide and having a much smaller commanding presence of a federal government. So I'm all for that, and I think that our founding fathers would be for that, and what started this country. Would be for that. What, what the ideals and ideas is what started it. So I, I think that the divorce idea, and I'm not talking about necessarily seceding. I'm just talking about letting it be like it was supposed to be, which is give the federal government, give the executive branch as little power as possible, and let the states figure it out on their own. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's that's yeah. So and, and then and and that's the tricky part, right? What what is the federal government gonna? does it need to be there for as far as your regulations go? Well, let's talk about the, uh, I want to talk about a few more because I obviously want to get to your forte in this whole conversation, mm. but um, um, <clears throat> immigration is the other issue. I don't want to touch too big much one. based on that, but that's a big one for sure. And I think, I think, I think though now that the, the, the left is kind of recently has kind of spring back, sprung back center because I, they're I getting think, closer to their election. Well, that, that, and, 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 and yeah. yeah. And, and I think, I mean, the public, the, the polls have spoken. I'm not sure. I heard it at the debate. I, I'm not sure what the statistic, I can't remember what the statistic was, but a majority of Americans think that immigration is a problem and needs to be addressed. addressed. When they said that 25 million illegal mm -hmm. immigrants have come into the country. That they know of. That, yeah. 25 million. Best guess. That's insane. And it's a government number, so you know it's a lie right off the bat. Right. I mean, it's 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 still ballparkish, but regardless of what that number is, regardless how off it is, that's an insane number. 
So I think that's something that definitely needs to be addressed. When, when we're rounding up by five or 10 million, Possibly, down, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah, I mean, the stat I read was like 7,000 a day coming through, which could, which is probably more. Um, other, that's, that's just the ones they can count. Right. You know, uh, yeah. Um, and then uh, media manipulation, right? Propaganda from other countries like like Russia and China, creating bots to make seeming social division between the left and right. So that's another part, not just from other countries, but also within our own legacy yeah, media. I, right? I, I would bet half those are ours anyway. Right. <laughs> right. I, 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 this other country is nonsense. Uh, uh, we're, we're, we, we're, we're doing it to ourselves. <laughs> right. How do you think, um, it's talking about the assassination attempts on Trump, how do you think the, um, a lot of people on the right are, are saying that the rhetoric used by the left is what stemmed this. And I, I, again, I, I don't like going this way because it's it goes both ways. And like a lot of people, a lot of times when something happens on the on the on the left, uh, the left say it's because the rhetoric of Trump. And then words, words, words are words. And people, unless you're calling to openly threat somebody, like the actions of the person are what's going to cause them to is is going to cause the whatever happened to happen, right? Mm -hmm. So your actions at the end of the day are, 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 are key. Um, but how, um, you, know, you know, how would this kind of, if Trump were to be assassinated, would this cause, Well, what, what would happen in your, in your mind? Well, that's a good one. Um, you know, I, I, it would be bad, <laughs> uh, obviously. So one side of the country, half the country is going to say something along the lines of, OK, so you stole the election last time. You were in danger of losing this 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 next one and you weren't going to win it. So you killed our guy. You know, uh, OK, since, again, when we hit that wall of, OK, there's no more negotiating with these people. Then it goes to the violence. Right. Because, OK, we can't vote our way out of this. We can't talk our way out of this. OK you know, have it your way. We, we, we begged you to be reasonable. You told us to shut up. So, okay. So here it is, you know? Um, well, and, and in a case like that, I'm worried that scenario one that you rely, where, absolutely. where you relate earlier since the exact, where you have a split within the military. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, well also since the executive branch is currently that is run by the democratic party, um, that will cause uh, a, court, a sort of rift or push by the Democratic Party to side with, for the military to side with the Democratic Party, right? Essentially. Uh, yeah, yes, you, you could absolutely have that where, okay, the, rule, the law says we have to side with whoever's in charge and it's been voted in. Then half the people are gonna say, well, yeah, but, but you, you killed our guy in the last run up to the, you know, in, in, in the in weeks leading up to the election, you shot our guy. So, uh, so, so it's not a fair, not a fair election, obviously. Um, so the, I could see that being a split, you know, cause when, when do you decide enough's enough, right? You know, uh, at what point does that happen? And to your point, I think when the normies can't feed their kids, when we start talking about getting crushed economically, you know, uh, you know, that, that, that becomes a problem. That's when the normies get fired up. Yeah, and let's talk. Let's talk about that. The financial issues that could lead to the economy, the economy to collapse and cause a civil war. Debt bubble, the debt bubble. So, uh, when you say the debt bubble, um, what do you mean by that? Oh, uh, just how, how uh, much we owe. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, uh, something ridiculous. Uh, it's absolutely insane. You can pull up the little counter, and it tells you. You know, it's live. You can just watch the numbers spin. Um, you know, uh, but yeah, it's something ridiculous. We're adding like a trillion every couple of you know months or whatever. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, you know, so we've hit the stage where we're, you know, maxed out on debt. Right. And it's going to become, it is becoming harder and harder and harder to sell our bonds, you know? And so that's how we get away with our debt. You've got a lot of countries pushing to de-dollarize, mm -hmm. you know, get right. away from the petrodollar and get away from uh, the reserve current, you know, the U S dollar is a reserve currency of the world. And so there are a lot of countries that do a lot of business, pushing pretty heavily to try to get away from that. Mm -hmm. um, you've got, uh, you know, I mean, look at the price of gold. It hit $2,700 an ounce or something like that recently. You know, uh, you know, all-time high. My dad uh, was shit himself knowing. Yeah. I don't know if you did. Um, he, I told you how much he lost one time doing options on gold a few years ago when it was mm -hmm. up and then it tanked. Tanked. But now mm -hmm. I'm, curious, yeah. I'm curious what his, where his investments lie. Well, options are fun. Yeah. It's a great way to lose a lot of money. Um, how, uh, much, how much of that though is, is uh, 
is due to the Fed printing money and creating all, more all inflation? Of Do you think all, all, all of it? All of it. All of it. Sure. So like people say, oh, my tax dollars pay for this. Your tax dollars haven't paid for anything in years. Um, all your tax dollars go to are paying the interest. Think of it like a credit card, right? So yeah, you all of your tax dollars just go to make the minimum payment. That's it. That's, that's, that's what our tax dollars go for. Then we deficit spend, which means borrow. So every time they say, okay, we've hit our new limit, right? And, but we need more money. So what do we do? We call the credit card company and tell them to raise the limit. Then we spend that much difference. You know, we spend that new space on the credit card. Then we make the minimum payments. Then we push it up again and again and again and again. And we've done that for, I think since the nineties or something, you know, um, you know, the last well, time we had a balanced budget. Right. Um, but, but that, that increases the debt, but the a short term solution to that is to print more money. To make, sure. To, spend to your, make, yeah. To try to try to debt your way out of debt. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, 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 that's the current plan and it's kicking the can down the road. Uh, and certain people love it. Um, certain people absolutely love it. The stock market well, they're loves pro, they're it. Pro, they're profiteering from it, right? For sure. For Pro sure. If you, own stock, it. if you own stocks or assets, any asset really, but, but you know, st it's typically stocks, real estate, stuff like that. If we print money and everything gets inflated, well, the value of your assets gets inflated too. That's why the average, I think the average house in America is now something like close to half a million dollars. Yeah. And well, I think there's also a lot of corruption and the whole, the whole black rocket, the fact that you have these private co corporates, corporations and entities that can buy up lots of households and then sure. sell it back and well, rent it. Oh, they'll, they're, they're, rent yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll rent it to and, you. And they, not they can it. buy those houses for five, half a million. Side no they, they don't care. Yeah, they don't care. Um, my buddy, Andrew, uh, who, who works in, he flips houses and sells and uh, rents out um, houses and apartments, mm -hmm. I think apartments, but anyways, he, he, he saw a flyer, uh, an online ad of, uh, don't buy someone, don't let someone, you know, don't sell your house to a private, per, to a private buyer, um, or basically to a person, um, when you could be selling it to this asset management or this big comp corporation mm -hmm. where you can get more money. So they're incentivizing people, Hey, we can get you more money for your house. We're willing to sure. do it. Come sell your house. And people selfishly want to make as much money as they can, but they don't realize that it's contributing to the problem. I think there needs to be legislation passed to prevent this from happening. That's going to be, a, that's a huge thing that, that will be a, that will cut down on the inflation the, 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 or the, the rising rates of, of, of the houses. I mean, so I, I'd like to know the stats. I don't know. Um, I wish we would have done research on it of how many houses are currently owned and how much money is owned in real estate in residential real estate by these giant companies like BlackRock. Yeah, it's quite a bit and they've bought up quite a bit of it in the last few years. Again, kind of foreseeing the inflation coming, um, you know, because you can't, it's the natural, it's the natural process to printing that as much money as we did. So we printed so much money during COVID, you know, that we, I mean, the numbers are astronomical, ridiculous. Um, and that's what has caused the inflation. So then you add to that a lot of bad policy pushed by the left, you know, um, bad economic policy, which is print more money, give more money away. Uh, clamp down on American energy and energy exports, uh, clamp down, you know, you know, just any sort of legislation they can come up with to just make it difficult for businesses to business. You know, um, they like to do that kind of stuff. And all, all of this just goes in a big giant cycle and causes, you know, all this inflation. Um, but eventually, you know, I mean, this has happened throughout time, you know, uh, going, going way on back, you know, this has happened to empires everywhere, happened to Rome, happened to the Spanish empire, happened, uh, it, it happens, you Let, know, let's uh, talk about that. and, and, and eventually you'll, you'll hit the, the max where, where, you know, it's okay, it's manageable, it's manageable, it's manageable, and then it collapses, you know, right. you have a currency collapse or something like that. After World War One, Germany printed money because of the war reparations they mm -hmm. owed from the Treaty of Versailles, which led mm -hmm. to political extremism, which led, which to, led to Hitler being correct. elected. Uh, the Russian Civil War, the Bolsheviks printed vast amounts of money. The Chinese Civil War, the Chinese Nationalist Party was printing money to finance its military operations against Spanish the Chinese Empire Communist, did it. Yeah, Communist they, Party. Yeah. The balloon inflation and then caused the system to side with the CCP mm -hmm. because of the ballooning inflation. They're like, oh, let's let, side with the CCP, which led to the Communist Party we, they, we have in China today. Mm -hmm. Um Let's talk back about the welcome, the economic inequality, the wealth gap, that that, that could be a big contributing factor. So mm -hmm. middle class is, is, is dying, plus the inflation. Um, I, I think we have countless examples of history. We can keep talking more because I want to talk about the, this inequality, another 
passage, another, and and again, inflation and the in, 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 economic inequality kind of play together because it, it's, it's the people at the bottom that are going to be suffering the most first, right? In the middle, yeah, and, and like you said, people on Wall Street, they're the ones that are loving the printing of the money. They're able to, absolutely. They, they're able to turn that into well, financial, their own yeah, financial so game. So the stock market is a sponge, right. right? It's just a sponge. And so it soaks up money because all that money that gets printed gets handed out to somebody. It's gets invested, spent. right. And it's, so wherever you spend that, eventually that giant sponge stock market will soak that money up, you know, uh, cause it has to go somewhere and where does it go? It eventually gets spent. So, I mean, even if you just go spend your money at, you know, you buy food at Walmart. Okay, great. Well, all those companies that sell the food and Walmart obviously are on the stock market. So that, all that money gets soaked up and eventually shows up in a stock price. Rises to the top. Rises to the top. It's just how it works. So, you know, people complain about that. It's like, okay, well, it's just a fact. So buy yourself some stock, participate. You know what I mean? Don't, don't, don't be an idiot. Be like, I'm just going to keep my money under the mattress. Uh, well, and, well, your <laughs> you average, know. average person doesn't have any, especially at the weight rate that's going, well, doesn't even have the money to put under the mattress, right? Well, f the, yeah, but I, I, I say too, you know, uh, everyone has a four, not everyone. Uh, a lot of people, if you have a retirement account, 401k, something like that, then you're in the stock market, you know? Um, so, so there's, you know, good and bad to that, I guess. Yeah. You know? It's not all bad. Yeah. But, uh, and, but that's, those are the big causes. The, 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 in, the wealth gap has been a huge cause. Like you said, the French revolution, Louis 16, Marie Antoinette, let them eat cake, got their head, got their heads chopped off. Uh, English civil Let's war. See you eat cake, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Can't eat no more yeah, with, that, with, yeah. no, with no body. No head. <laughs> yeah. English English Civil War of 1642, the aristocracy and merchant class were clashing with the crown's taxation demands, and they had a war over through the monarchy to establish mm -hmm. the Commonwealth. They needed more money. No more money. We need um, to take more of your money. The American Revolution. Sound familiar? <laughs> American Revolution. Taxation yes. without representation, right? Trade uh -huh. restrictions, funneling money back to the crown, right? Um, and then... Um, so yeah, I think I think um, at this rate, there's only one place for it to go. It's the collapse of the dollar eventually as the global reserve currency. Would, would it turn to the euro or the <sighs> Chinese yen, yuan, yuan, whatever it is? The yeah, um, that would be that would be a big a big reason. For I it to, I don't I I don't know if it could do that. Like you know, the the Chinese currency is so iffy, fickle, fickle, yeah. iffy. Uh, yeah, and, and and nobody trusts anything run by the communists. So I mean, it's just. You know, they just manufacture our stuff, um, you know, um, cheaply. Right. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know that anybody would trust that as a, as a reserve currency. Um, it's tough. That's why the dollar has remained as long. You know, we've been able to get away with our shenanigans of debt spending for forever is we have the petrodollar and reserve currency. So, you know, uh, everyone has to buy our bonds at some point um, because there's no other alternative. You know, there's no other better option out there until there is a better option. You know, I mean, I think that's where you see, look at the explosion and popularity of like, uh, like Bitcoin, something mm -hmm. like that, yep. right? Uh, an independent thing, um, you know, now people will argue it's magic internet money. Uh, well, okay, fine. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, uh, I think it's rise in popularity has come because of it's a protection against inflation. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, and of course the government hates it and wants to crush it because they can't control it. Right. So, you know, right. Uh, uh, that makes sense. Um, so we've covered, uh, kind of political division. We've covered economic collapse. And then third scenario would be, and, and again, these are intertwined, right? Um, the, the energy distribution and collapse of the grid. Like if, if, if somehow, um, you know, yeah, right. That, that would be something like, you know, EMT kind of warfare or EMP kind of warfare, you know, that, that, oh, that, something like that. Yeah. It doesn't even have to be all that fancy. Uh, I, I think, I think I mean, look we've what got happened. a lot of vulnerabilities. Look what, look what happened during the freeze in Texas, right? Absolutely. You know, that's a perfect example of, of shit uh, can go of wrong and very quickly. Very and, quickly. and so, yeah, that kind of, I guess, I guess we're, we're eventually going to get into this, like what to do about it. Like, you know, into the preparedness world or whatever. Um, is that where we're headed with this? We're I mean, uh, uh, you know, well, so we're, we're getting there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I'm sort of a prepper light, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, compared to people that are take it very seriously. I'm, I'm very much on the lighter side of things on that, in that regard. But, but, uh, but yeah, there are some things you can do, you know, to, to, yeah, um, but I mean, I, it, 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 other things besides the EMP would be just a natural disaster on a big enough of a scale, right? Just like, like, like a hurricane. Yeah, like a hurricane, 
like a you know like an asteroid possibly you know we were good at detecting those but solar to, flare solar flare right that would be a big emp pulse essentially that would that would mess the grid up cyber attacks on the infrastructure um How about a physical attack on well, infrastructure so here's one uh, I, I mean we just said, got done saying there's 25 million people and we don't know who they are floating around our country right <laughs> Right. Exactly. Yeah. Could some of them be up to no good? Right. Uh, you know, could some of them be plants, you know, by you know bad, bad state actors that, that don't like us very much and they're just waiting to get the instructions to go cause some trouble. How about right. a water treatment plant? Um, how about all of a sudden the water is no longer safe? You know, all the things that we as Americans kind of take for granted, you turn the switch, light comes on, you turn the tap, water comes out. It's safe to drink unless you live in Flint, <laughs> you know, uh, but uh, those are all kind of things we take for granted. And if any of those get disrupted, you know, uh, you go to the store, there's food, you know, right. um, you buy it, you know, and you go home, you know, uh, any of those things start to get disrupted, you know, you can have serious, serious panic and serious trouble. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I mean, we all got a good dose of what happens when things get disrupted during COVID. Right. Right. I mean, sure. oh, supply, uh, you know, distribution lines and whatnot getting disrupted how much chaos did that cause? Now, right. most of that was an, an annoyance and an inconvenience. Oh, my stuff is stuck on a container ship, you know, that I ordered or whatever, you know, uh, you know, Amazon will get it to you as soon as they can, you know, um, but most of that was an annoyance, but what happens when that goes deeper and more right. prolonged? When, when necessities like, yeah, like, uh, I mean, our water got shut off or we had a leak <clears throat> about a week ago <clears throat> and a plumber couldn't come until Monday. So we went like three days without, uh, running water we'd have to go to the to the meter and turn off the water and then mm -hmm. turn it on when we were needed to shower and stuff like that but we were basically without water for three days essentially and that sucked it wasn't fun and can you imagine when that happens when you're like oh how, when that's all the time when that's all the time for everyone right mm -hmm. um uh one cyber attack that i wasn't aware of was in 2021 the colonial pipeline cyber attack uh, by a hacker group dark side have you heard did you hear about this it shut down the pipelines operation for five days which caused localized shortages of gas diesel and jet fuel mm -hmm. so something like that on a bigger scale could lead to transportation disruptions which could affect food and water supply for example so or your ability to move around if you can't get gas right yeah under what scenarios or circumstances could martial law be enacted that could cause the citizens to revolt against the government like because think about like the pandemic right mm -hmm. like you had a lot of people that were against vehemently against the lockdowns right unconstitutional mm -hmm. not not right At, w and it turns out not that helpful right from in retrospect so where is the tipping point well at what point are are are, 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 are we gonna are, are people do well, people say i think i think the covid thing worked out in opening a lot of people's eyes to this because before it was always just kind of a oh that could happen but it won't until it did until we got to see where you know, we saw some, some line stepping, you know, some stepping over some lines there. And, and, uh, so I think everyone's kind of done with that now, you know? Um, so the next time they try one of those maneuvers, I think there's going to be a lot more resistance from a lot more people, mm -hmm. um, you know, be enormous pushback, you know, on, on them trying to do anything. They basically all but ruined every shred of credibility that they, <laughs> that they have, uh, you know, and that's across pretty much all institutions, but you know, I mean, does anybody trust a thing that the government says? Does anybody trust a thing that public health says now? I mean, come on, you, you guys, you guys are done. You guys are, uh, you know, no more credibility, not a leg to stand on the media. I mean, that's why people are watching stuff like this, right? you know? Um, yeah, you know, that's all gone. So any, any time I think that they get to get, get up there and scream and stuff at the top of their lungs in unison, I think now is just, no, no one's going to pay any mind to that. Yeah, and, and the hard part when we were talking about earlier about the dec dec decimation of what truth is, like understanding what truth is and what science is when you have these big paid for entities like the American Heart Association that are telling you what's the right thing to eat when they're telling you to eat. Oh, like, like the food pyramid? Or like the food pyramid, <laughs> like the fact that hospitals have sugar water in, 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 in vending machines and, like, and promote the consumption of high fructose corn syrup by just allowing these giant conglomerate com cor corporations to put their sodas in their in mm -hmm. their vending machines. Go to a hospital and find me some, find me a hospital that that only has water or a, a, a basic electrolyte drink. It doesn't exist. It's all soda. It's all sugar water, mm -hmm. right? Um, so it's hard to to trust a lot of these quote scientific institutions that have your best interest at heart. Well, because they, they don't. don't, they have an agenda. Right. Everyone, they, they have an agenda. And I think a lot of that has been really unmasked here in the last few years. You know, um, I've run around forever saying, I don't trust any of them. You know, shut up, Mike, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. you're crazy. I was like, okay, but 
now, now, now everyone says, oh, well, that's maybe not such a crazy idea anymore because we've seen this now just all but disintegrate, you right. know? Um, and I feel like that, I think that's where we get kind of, when we started talking in the beginning where everyone's, why is that word on the tip of everybody's tongue? You know, you know, why is everybody talking about this kind of stuff now? Cause it's right there. Everybody can feel it shaky, you know, being, being really shaky, you know, you know, major institutions have no more credibility. Nobody trusts the government. Uh, we're starting to not be able to trust the dollar. <laughs> you know, other countries are trying to get away from it. Uh, you know, the economic problems, uh, the inflation that's hurting everybody. I mean, these are all just little check marks on the uh, list to male massive problem extra weight on that camel's back yeah for sure so let's talk about preparation now so what are the best ways to be prepared if a civil war does break out oh so i i, I think there's really no such animal as like like preparing for these mega disasters I, I i don't think that there's any such thing you you can you can prep for smaller disasters like you said like like the freeze that happened here or your water's out right so if you have some of the like really basic necessities you know have some extra food in the house you know have some extra water you know uh have a firearm know how to use it have plenty of ammo for it you know um in case that gets hard hard to hard to come by um those are just kind of some of the basic things that you can do um yeah, I think I think on a large scale thing, though, I, I don't think there's any such thing as pre be prepared for that. I say be prepared to leave, you know, right. leave wherever you are. If there's violence near where you are, you need to be somewhere else. You know, you, you know, especially so I think so, so much this preparedness thing is like based on who you are, where you are and your circumstances. Location right? is huge. Yeah. Location. I mean, I live in a major urban area, so I'm not, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, you know, I am not in a good location for this, you know, for, for any of that kind of thing. So again, that's why I say I'm sort of on the lighter side of things. I keep a little extra food, some extra water, plenty of bullets, you know, um, stuff like that. But, you know, as far as, you know, being majorly prepared, I think it depends where you are, you know, and your circumstances too. You have, do you have little kids, you know, do you have, uh, you know, if we have major disruptions in, in stuff like supply line type stuff, you know, is there any kind of medication that you need mm -hmm. that you have to take every day? Right. You know, or, or something like that, you know, or does, does your kid have a medical condition? Well, you need to have more of that medicine around, mm -hmm. you know, um, or a way to get it. Um, uh, and again, like all this preparedness stuff, it's, it's, you have to do it before you need it. This idea that we're going to run out and do it now, you know, it's like, Hey, uh, I, I, I need a gun. Can I get one? Sure. But if you don't know how to use it, 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 it well, the, 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 yeah, it's kind of, you saw kinda, what happened during kinda, COVID, right? Everybody, everyone bought ran it. on, bought, uh, bought a gun. I was like, which I thought was crazy. I'm like, was, they, they told you all to go home. Like it's the safest it's ever been. You're all in your house. <laughs> play, play video games. I mean, whatever. Like, I mean, it's, it, I didn't foresee that being a big, we need to arm ourselves type situation, but. Well, I think it shed some light onto the, the human psyche and the condition as to what, you know, mm -hmm. deep down where there was some fear, there was some unknown. And, and when shit gets unknown and fearful, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. self-preservation is the first thing that sure. comes to mind. So, um, I mean, as, on a small, as a small example, I remember, uh, before lockdown happened, just when Trump was talking about, you know, how this wasn't going to turn into something. I remember him talking about that. And then I heard, uh, I was listening to NPR about, um, a cruise ship that was from Italy and people had been getting it. Oh yeah. Remember that? Yeah. that was like the very, very beginning. And I was like, my, my gym's gonna lock down. I, I I had I knew it before lockdowns were even talked about. I was like, so I went and I ordered weights and I ordered bands and ordered everything that I needed to do. I mean, obviously, I should have maybe thought about like the more important stuff, like toilet paper. <laughs> no, but, yeah, that was another bizarre one. I was like, this isn't a stomach thing. Why is everybody buying up all the toilet but, paper? But but you know, I, I think preparation uh, for unknown scenarios is important. And there's a difference between being, you know over preparing and, and you know again if you over prepare to a detriment then that's you know you might be considered a doomsday prepper fine but if you think about like okay the necessities okay so if you aren't going to leave your house having a way to p procure water to have water like you, you whether need, like the basics you need food water and security right, right? like the, those are like the the basic fundamental blocks, right? I mm -hmm. mean you know we got to eat we got to drink water and we need to be able to protect ourselves. So once you kind of have that covered i kind of think down the line of like the next thing that would be really handy um i like is again just depends where you live if you live in a house and you can buy one of these big you know fancy backup home gener generator things awesome like uh if you can't buy one of those or for whatever reason or don't want to i mean like a little goal zero portable generator 
is great. So you have a way, should you lose power? Hey, I can at least run my fridge and, you know, the stove or something like that, you know, so you can just kind of get the basics done, you know, taken care of. Right. Well, so let's talk about if a civil war to actually break oh. and how we would prepare for that. So um, first off, location being the big one, right? So, yeah. so in your situation being, and most people who are in an urban environment, the, would you would you suggest the best thing to do is to get out of there and head towards, you know, you, you have to. So, so I, I think it, <laughs> the downside to all of this preparedness stuff is that nobody survives alone. Right. Right. You, you know, no, no one, no one, you know, no matter how prepared you think you are, uh, you know, no one can do this without a group of people. So mm -hmm. I think the big thing is you need to be in a place and around people that, that you want to be around, if that makes sense. Right. right? People you, know, you want to be around. Oh, I live in the city. I live with assholes. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, that's what I'm saying. What uh, kind of people know. do we, are, are you looking at? Well, you know, um, are, are you near friends and family? You know what I mean? Um, if you can be near them, that's better because now there's a group of you. Um, you know, are they similarly like-minded and able to take care of themselves? You know, are they prepared enough to take care of themselves? And then if the answer is yes to that, then great. Now you have a group of people that's always going to do better than you trying to do it on your own. Mm -hmm. Do it all by yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, the downside is in our modern world, most of us don't know our neighbors and you know, so I think like the kind of a smaller town thing, I think we saw that during COVID people leaving major cities and going to smaller places, you know, and get, getting out, they can work remotely. You know, if you can live somewhere else, live somewhere else, you know, or live, live in a place that's, you know, affords you space, and affords distance. you space and some distance and, and being around people that are going to be like-minded to you. Right. You and, know, and I think that gives you a better you know, small towns are kind of better sense of community, that kind of a thing. And I think those are going to do fair a lot better because it's a group of people um, versus it, every man for himself trying to, trying to fight it out in the streets over food and water is a disaster. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Absolute disaster. And you're going to lose that very quick. So first, because, first step would be to move. If you're in an urban environment, to try to distance yourself from there and find uh, more, somewhere else to be somewhere else to be yeah somewhere with more space more area and, and with with people with yeah. like-minded people and, and, I, and I think the ability to 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 move around um freely that's another one you know if there were to have you know ma massive conflict you know either massive conflict or even minor conflict but if they were regular like in the troubles type scenario where there's frequent conflict in this area and you've got you know you and your little kids maybe the best survival thing for you is uh plane tickets you know, <laughs> pack up and leave, you know, uh, you know, go elsewhere, you know, get away from that. Right. Um, so that's something that needs to be kind of thought about too, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, nothing beats a plane ticket to somewhere else, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, to a country yeah, that's not yeah, 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 to some place that where, where there's not having conflict. Look at how fast the exodus of Ukraine, you know, I mean, oh, they're rolling tanks through here. Like, yeah, you got to get out of there. You know, you can't be there. So, so that's something too that, kind of have to factor that in so again kind of where you are do you have a group of people with you whether it's friends family local community whatever that are going to be a benefit to you mm -hmm. you know versus you trying to do it all on your own yeah and i think i mean because that's a losing battle you're just right. never gonna you, you know you're, I'm, you're, I'm gonna turn into john wick no you're not yeah. <laughs> no you're not you're gonna be face down dead and 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 that's the end of that you know uh you know uh again because that like no one survives alone, right? Well, guess which groups of people are already organized or semi-organized. That's all the bad guys, your gangs, your criminals, whatever, you know, they're organized into groups. So the very minute that you have a breakdown in law and order, and we've seen this over and over again, you know, um, you know, Hurricane Katrina, uh, you know, you name it, um, during the COVID, post COVID riots and whatever, you know, um, post George Floyd riots, you know, any group of organized people is going to fare better in a survival mode than anybody trying to do it out there on their own. Right. So. Uh, I think for, for from a practical approach, mm -hmm. just um, if you're not going to be leaving, say, your home, mm -hmm. um, I think stocking up on canned goods, food. I mean, but a lot of people don't have, you know, they have like a jar of pickles in the fridge and that's it. So I think just mm -hmm. having, you know, a can opener, canned beans, some spam. I mean, honestly, some MREs that, you know, I, 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 I always, I always think, I always try to say, get food that you're going to eat. Not just, this is the, for the end of the world food. Like, no, well, like get food that you're going to eat. You got to keep the macros right. You need that protein. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Get food that you're going to eat. Just yeah. get a little extra of it, you know, which, yeah. which again, you know, if you, 
you know, have a family. I mean, you shop at, I'm sure, like any of the warehouse stores, yeah, your right, Costco's Costco, or right. Sam's or whatever. Buy some extra stuff, you know, keep it in the house, you know, um, it, it's it's not really a big deal and and stuff that you're going to use, mm-hmm. you know, um, I think after that, the generator is a biggie, you know, and then uh, obviously the water, you know, right. got to have that goes goes without saying, but, you know, store a couple extra, you know, if you got the, uh, the big water jugs, you know, that you dump in there, buy a couple extra of those, keep mm-hmm. them around. It's an easy way to store, you know, a couple extra gallons of water, you know. So you can make it through a minor setback like, oh, hey, they turned the water off. Oh, okay. Well, you know, it's not the end of end for me yet. Right. You know? Right. Got some time to mm-hmm. time, time to mentally prepare for this. Exactly. Uh, you've got a large array of weaponry. What, what do you, would you say, um, again, if you live in an urban, if you, take your scenario, you live in an urban environment, you've got ways and methods to defend yourselves, handguns, rifles, a lot of ammo. How do you transport all that to begin with? If you're trying to leave, oh, I, you're not going to transport all of it. Yeah, you're going to have to pick. So, so what do you pick? What do you pick? <laughs> uh, the do everything gun. So your rifle. Yeah, yeah. You just yeah. yeah. If for people are to get getting get getting getting into this stuff again, it depends where you live. If you live way off in, I'm just going to pick a place. Let's say Colorado or Wyoming or something like that. Well, your choices of what rifle you might prefer are going to be very different than if you live in a highly urban environment but but you need just sort of you know one good quality rifle uh you know and uh and 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 you know get yourself a handgun obviously but uh you know in your case get yourself a glock <sighs> get yourself any other we've been through this so many times <laughs> um yes and then if your friends and family could use the same system so that the magazines and ammo is all interchangeable that'd be great there is unless you have some brother-in-law that wants to i want to try this different thing oh cool um i want to be often around the m&p and the hk i see the i see the in situations like this i see the value of Everything everybody the same we all have blocks we all have interchangeable mags for the for the most part holsters for those of us that aren't wrong-handed yeah. um yeah but um no that's that's a really a minor issue i'm just really kind of making fun of that but but uh but having at least standardized calibers, you know, again, don't pick some boutique caliber thing. Oh, I've got this nifty thing in this cool. Right. Nine cool, mil, cool, cool, nine mil cool, and, cool caliber yeah. that no one makes ammo for nifty. Um, th- that's not going to be helpful. You know, you need just, you know, get yourself, you know, a carbine, set it up, learn to use it, get yourself a handgun, set it up, learn to use it. You know, you're good. And uh, just so nine, <clears throat> nine millimeter, uh, a nine millimeter handgun or a rifle that shoots five, five, six, five, two, five, two, three, whatever. Five, yeah. Five, yeah. Six, right. Uh, yeah. Standard. That, that's a, that is a standard across the board thing. Everyone's got one, um, you know, get one, you know, learn to use it. Ammo gets pretty heavy. How Ammo do you, does get pretty heavy. How do you lug? How much, how many rounds do you lug around? If you if you're like I'm leaving, I, oh. got, I got to get out of the city. I oh. can't stay here anymore. Oh well, yeah. Uh, you chuck a couple of ammo cans in the in the car. Um, so how many is that? You. How many you have there though? I'll be right. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I haven't counted. I'm actually due to order some more here shortly. But um, a thousand maybe. Oh man, I, I mean, how many would you take with you if yeah, you're like, leaving? I mean, I would take whatever you can fit in the car, I suppose. Right. Um, you know, whatever you got. Um. But, but, uh, as far as how much should you have, that's a tough question. You know, a lot of times people say, oh, this, this many rounds, that many rounds. Remember that, you know, shooting is a perishable skill, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, you know, you need to have quite a bit of ammo just so that you can get through times where ammo is hard to come by. Mm -hmm. There's no massive disaster. It's just, there's an ammo shortage for whatever reason, be it political or whatever that's happened several times, you know, during COVID couldn't get ammo, you know, got all, it all got bought up. So if you want to go spend some time at the range or, or, or be able, be able to, to shoot, to maintain your skill level, you're going to need to have plenty of extra, you know, and that that's before you get into trying to assist anybody else that's in your friend or family group with, you know, Hey, can I get some ammo? Yes. Here, because again, we need the group to have, you know, plenty. So what are the most important skills in preparation that an average person should learn to protect themselves and their family during the breakdown of law and order? Besides being able to, sh- to shoot, yeah, uh, uh, learn, 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 learn to shoot is a, is a biggie. Um, after that, man, I I don't know. I think there's again that's why the group is so important. I right. keep going going back to that. No one can do it all, right. you know. Um, and you're going to need just like we need for society, right? We need a lot of different skill sets. So you know you can't do it all, but learning to do something useful, you know, if you have, you know, medical skill, or if you right. have, you know, like the the basics of like 
you know, go take yourself a class on first aid, you know, well, learn I, how to deal with, uh, you know, with the basics of like a gunshot. I think that's, something that's, like that. I think those are huge things that everybody should take regardless. You obviously having a surgeon and somebody who's, who's a lot more specified in their, in their skill set, sure. of course, but, uh, just being able to, you know, for, like you said, first aid CPR, uh, knowing an electrician would be great. Uh, knowing a plumber. I mean, you know, right. I mean, again, you're going to need so many skills that no one can do it all. Right. Right. So, so you just have to find something that you're interested in good at, um, you know, and then, you know, build, building up your, your building up your skill sets, you know, uh, it's pretty handy. It's also the hardest and most time consuming right. part. Right. You know? And not only that you have to, because yeah, everyone wants an easy answer. I buy this many bullets and this much food and this much water. And now I'm ready to survive. Uh, you're ready to get your shit took is, you know, by somebody else is <laughs> what's going to happen. You know, um, uh, that's, that's all that is. But if you want to check it off your little list and feel good about yourself, then that's fine. You know, um, it does. Right. Pre it's, preparation. And, 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 and a, lot of, a lot of stuff is kind of like, like home insurance, you know, like, you know, you, you buy insurance for your car, you buy insurance for your house. This is like, like extra life insurance, <laughs> you know, I have food and water and bullets, <laughs> you right. know? Uh, okay. You know, um, you know, and, 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 a, and a couple extra skill sets that, that you pick up along the way. So, uh, aside, w would there be any other type of weaponry or tactical training besides what you recommended? Oh, as much as you can get. Right. I but, mean, but, but just again, besides uh, from a nine, besides a nine millimeter handgun and a rifle, oh, I mean, night, night vision would be handy. Um, if you can afford it, <laughs> you know, uh, um, you know, it, it, there's any number of other things you could go down that rabbit hole. Like right. as you've learned, shooting's kind of a rabbit hole. You start with the basics and then you can go as far down that rabbit hole as you want to go, you know, um, uh, and that's up to each person, but, um, how far down that, down that path they, they, they want to go. But, um, you know, but like I said, just for, for most everybody else, start with the basics, you know? Um, okay. So you've got, we're on, you, you've got top, the top five supplies that you have to choose. <laughs> what are those top five? You've got five things oh, to choose. Five things to choose. Do I, okay. Uh, 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 food, water, firearms. I'm going to go with a backup generator. And then the fifth one, um, would be. medicine i suppose if you can get your hands on some extra uh you know something basic like uh something we take for granted like a uh, penicillin oh right you know any, yeah uh, you know or any medication that you require did you obviously. see 1883 did you watch 1883 yeah yeah the mm -hmm. ending mm -hmm. like man something i don't want to ruin it for anybody but something as simple as some penicillin would have probably would have changed that, fixed that right up <laughs> yeah. would have fixed a lot of stuff throughout yeah. history yeah. yeah yeah uh uh it's a wonder drug but um you know um but, but, but yeah, I mean, if you can get some extra of that, if you know, uh, somebody who will write you extra prescription, it's not like you can, you know, get high on it or get off on it, but you know, having something like that around is pr pretty, pr pretty handy. All right. What about, uh, personality types? What are the most, what personality types are most likely to thr to thrive if there was a civil war and, and how can they use their personality traits to benefit them? Criminals. I think criminals would do quite, 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 quite well at first. Um, no, I'm kind of kidding, but kind of not. Uh, I, I don't know. That's, a, that's kind of a tough one. I think. I would say diplomatic and people who can communicate well would probably be able to help. If you can negotiate your way out of a situation, the problem is once this breakdown of law and order has occurred, we're no longer in a negotiating stage or we're going to negotiate from a position of strength, you know, um, uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know how much of that is, is going to be handy, uh, being, but being able to, um, maybe work with other people, I think is going to be pretty, pretty handy. Um, you know, you're going to have to have that at some point and, and you're going to have to be able to form some kind of group in order to survive at some point, you right. know, uh, past, if this thing goes past more than like a week, <laughs> you know what I mean? You're going to have to have to be able to work with other people. Right. Um, you know, in some form or fashion, because no, no one, no one's going to do it on their own. Right. This idea that we're going to, I'm going to go to my bunker and live in my, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> you know, if you have a bunker and you can go live in your bunker, fine. Right. But, uh, you know, we emerge 30 years from now and oh, great. Um, but, but for that would be ideal. Uh, sure. If you've got a billion dollars to, you know, you know, you you know uh, yeah, if you're a billionaire and you can make that happen, good for you, I suppose. But, yeah. um, you know, uh, we're talking about like regular people, man. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, something as simple as, you know, yeah, being able to work, work with other people. And I think just the mindset of, I mean, we're, we're all of us, myself included, are super fragile. We're used to running water and electricity and, you know, uh, you know, Wi-Fi internet. And, you know, uh, you know, if those things go away, how, how well are you able to deal with that change? And I think the first step is just acknowledging that it's possible, mm -hmm. you know, um, 
then you can move towards, okay, well, what do I do about it? How do I fit into a world like that? Yeah. You know, um, that's full of chaos and, you know. So resilience obviously plays a huge role for sure. That would be big. Yeah. 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 Um, I want to go back to when leaving, a den ideally you'd want to leave a densely populated uh, urban area. And early. Right. Before early, the right, mass, before. And, and, you know, the, you don't want to be stuck you know, running out of gas in, in, you know, bumper to bumper traffic. Like we've seen people leaving hurricanes and they're just sat there for, for a day, right. you know, stuck on a road someplace. Right. It's better to be safe, get, leave early, anticipate that this could happen, get out of, get out of Dodge and then find a more uh, suitable area maybe. Yeah. And again, you know, things are going to get super simple, right? Um, you know, who, who, who do we all turn to in times of trouble, right? Throughout history, right? It's going to be friends and family, right? That's, you know, now not all of us live near our friends and family, but if you do, um, you know, again, making sure that they're kind of on the same page as you and able to take care of themselves, then, then that, again, you start forming that, that, that group. And I think the group is going to survive. I mean, that's, that's the key to human survival, right? You know, uh, all the way back to cave, cave critters, you know what I mean? Like, you know, we got it, but gotta, gotta be in a group. I have a tribe. Yeah. yeah. yeah gotta have a tribe, man. Um, uh, did you, in your top five, did you mention communications? Like I did, uh, I didn't, it's fair. I, I, I guess I took that as fairly obvious, but do you have a way to communicate with everybody? Um, Walkie talkies basically short, 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 short. If, if, if you want to get into that, that's a whole hobby unto itself. You know what I mean? Like all the radio well, stuff. You won't, you won't have cell phones. Those will be down most, most likely. Well, so maybe, maybe not, yeah. you know, um, assuming, uh, assuming uh, they you know, are. do you have a satellite phone? You know, right. um, uh, yeah, there's, I mean, who, who do you need to communicate with? You right. Know? Right. Um, you know, these are all going to be such individual, you know, things, you know, but that's kind of f way further down the line for me. Um, you know, uh, as far as stuff goes, you know, I think if you can get those basics covered, you have a way to generate power, you know, do you have a way to, you know, well, but assume that assume like it, uh, one of the, one of the things that happens is the, you know, the, the self, the towers go out. You have no means of communication with friends and family to be able to even group together. Having sure. having a means of of group communication, whether it's what would that be a short or short, yeah. a ham radio yeah, walk short, short yeah, walkie yeah. talkie short. Yeah. I mean, I can't I can't walkie talkie to Flower Mound right now. No, no, so, you're going to need ham radio for that. Which, okay. like I said, and that's its own rabbit hole and its own hobby. And people are into that. And if you want to get into that, great. So it's 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 cool. It's something I've just never spent a lot of time with. Um, because I just didn't want to dedicate the time to it. I know it's going to take time to get into that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, if you can want to, want to, if you have a group of people already, you know, with friends, family, whatever, mm -hmm. you've already building your little tribe. Well then yeah, getting a way to talk to each other and communicate is an excellent idea. I want to get you know? a ham radio. I think, I think, I think us having a ham radio between the people in the DFW area might be good. might be good to have a, a friends and ham, family. Ham, ham radio folks have, have, uh, uh, you know, the ham radio operators have, have, uh, you know, helped out in many a disaster, um, you know, I mean, all, all the time. Surely you know? a ham radio has been condensed in size with the, with the uh, yeah. technology. Yeah. You can get, you probably hold it in your hand now. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. you can get, you can get, get, get a pretty good, good, good radio that'll fit, fit in your, uh, fit in your pocket. Yeah. That's a good, uh, that's a good, probably a good investment to make. I'm going to, I'm going to Amazon that shit and <laughs> check it out. Um, you no, know, but you take things like that for granted, like like our water going out, like not having water, you know, mm -hmm. or power going out, not having electricity. I mean, those yeah. things that you take for granted are, are huge when you don't have communication. If you've grown up in a first world country, yeah, <laughs> yeah we yeah. take a lot for granted. We take, right. you know, that the hospital's right there and the food's right there and it comes on the trucks. And, you know, I mean, look at during the, during every time there's a, there's a freeze, right? You know, the grocery store runs out of, you know, bread, eggs and milk, right? right you know, right. you know, uh, oh, you know, uh, um, you know. So, you know, we've all seen this before and we've seen now with like since the COVID years, you know, we've, we've kind of seen all these things happen. So I think, I think people are just kind of getting there on their own, you know, yeah. into this world of, oh, I need to be ready for something, you know, that's not normal life, you know, um, yeah. that can happen. Right. Yeah. I think food, shelter protection and, and, uh, you know, uh, medicine and then communicate ways to communicate. I think, uh, yeah. Uh, learning Morse code, like <laughs> uh, if you needed to, you know that could be a useful way. It useful could way. be. There's, there's, there's a, again, there's, there's a, different rabbit holes you could go different, down. But. Different, different again, and this is why you're going to need a lot of different skills. You know, um, that no, you, you know, no matter what you do, no, no one person can do it all. You know, um, so, so again, you're going to need to build that that group of people. Whether you build it ahead of time or whether you do it afterwards, well, 
we'll we'll see how that works out. But let's hope let's hope this never but, happens. I mean, you know how hard it is to just to get people to do 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 the basics of of you know learning to take care of themselves. You know, it's sometimes it's like pulling teeth. Right. Hey, man, buy this thing, learn to use it. You know, um, no, or or okay, five years from now I'll do it. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. You well, know, it's like I'm, pulling teeth. Yeah. I mean, fire. I mean, firearm safety and being able to fire a handgun. Like, you know, we were going quite regularly, like about a year ago, and then a long period of time went before since I went. And mm -hmm. I think you as well. But like, you know, you've been doing it for such a long time that you. It's kind of like learning to read a, a language. You know, mm -hmm. like when you're a kid, it's like you. If you were to stop. Or if you were to take a foreign language now, like say Chinese, and were to take it for maybe sporadically for a few months, you would, and then stop taking it, you'd completely forget it, right? Right. You've got to hit past the threshold with the skill to where you're doing it regularly enough for long enough, and eventually it'll like playing an instrument, like playing an instrument, right? Exactly. I mean, yeah. like like I mean, like it's, like it's, playing piano or guitar, right? It, if I take a few lessons and then I don't do it for a while, I'll, it's gone. I'll, I'll, it's gone. Yeah. You it's know, a, if you've done it so long that you're at a professional level or, or at a very, very high level of skill. Well, yeah, I may be a little rusty if I haven't played in a while, but you know, it'll come back. Yeah. It'll come right back. Right. You know? So again, that's where we talk about like that, having that extra ammo thing, you know, it's a perishable skill and you need to have enough that you can maintain your skill, you know, during times where ammo gets hard to come by. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and I, and I think people underestimate what that means because I think it's a lot simpler than we, than, than people assume mm -hmm. it is just honestly, basic safety handgun training, like making sure that your fingers off the trigger, you know, making sure, making sure that you're not a danger to yourself and, right. and, and, and your friends and family, you know, first we have to make you not dangerous to yourself and others with this thing until we want you to be, right. <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. So much, so much time. Yeah. As you, you know, have seen when we get new, new people out there, we got to go over it and over it and over it and over it and over it. Hey, don't point that there. Hey, keep your finger this way. You know, all that kind of fundamental stuff, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. You got to spend a lot of time with that. Yeah. And, and again, trying to do that in a big fat hurry is kind of hard. You right. know, um, it's like, hey, can you teach me to play guitar? I'm going to go to a concert tomorrow and I'm playing in a band tomorrow. But I've never held this guitar before. Can, right. can you show me how to play it? Right. No, <laughs> it's not going to work, you know, so. Yeah. Well, cool, man. Is there anything else you want to cover? No, I think we've hit um, the full boogaloo spectrum. Sweet, man. <laughs> well, hopefully it never happens. Uh, I hope not either. And I, I think the best thing for all of us, really, I guess, would be full wholehearted participation in legitimate society, you know, uphold all the pillars of our society. You know, we seem to be trying to tear them down every five minutes. I'm like the best survival for all of us is if America continues as per normal, <laughs> you know, yeah. that's how we survive, you know, but we want to seem to chop those pillars down. It's like, stop doing that. Yeah. Please, please. Amen. I'm begging you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you know? All right. Thanks brother. Appreciate uh, it. Yeah.